and welcome back to Walking Through the Word. Today we're going to be looking at 1 Timothy chapter 1, verses 12 through 20. So grab your Bibles and follow along with me as we walk through the Word together. In our previous study, we learned about Paul exhorting Timothy to make sure that he is confronting those who were considering themselves to be teachers of the law, but did not know the law, because the law was not made for the righteous, but for the unrighteous. And now Paul, in these passages, transitions into his own personal testimony so that he could exhort Timothy to continue walking in the instructions that were keeping with the prophetic gifting that Timothy received in his ministry call. And so Paul says here in verse 12, I, this is Paul speaking from a personal point of view, I give thanks to Christ Jesus, our Lord, who has strengthened me because he considered me faithful, appointing me to the ministry. I want us to take note of several things in this first verse in verse 12. It's that Paul is giving thanks particularly to Christ Jesus, our Lord, the one who saved him. Because it's Jesus who's strengthening him. And what is Christ strengthening him for what is what is the purpose of this well it's for the purpose of the ministry it's to strengthen paul for the work of the gospel why does christ strengthen paul he says because the conjunction word here because he that is christ jesus considered me faithful appointing me to the ministry so the faithfulness of paul in the gospel in the ministry of the gospel resulted in Christ appointing him, calling him, granting him a position as an apostle to the ministry. And so Christ is strengthening Paul to the call of the ministry because Paul is being considered faithful to this call of the ministry. So for us ministers of the gospel, for me as a pastor, for those of us listening who are pastors or ministry leaders, all of your strength comes from Jesus. And it comes from Jesus because he desires for you to continue faithfully in the gospel ministry. But that's true about all of us. All of our walks in Christ are strengthened by Christ himself because he desires us to continue faithfully in the call in which he gave us. That is the call to the gospel. So he says in verse 13, even though. I was formerly a blasphemer, a persecutor, and an arrogant man. So he's telling Timothy, look at the Lord is the one who is strengthening me. He is, he has considered me faithful. He appointed me to the ministry, but look at, I was a blasphemer. I was a persecutor. I was an arrogant, prideful man. I didn't deserve to be part of this ministry. And yet Christ called him to the ministry. So he says, but, as a contrast to what he just said in verse 13, but I received mercy because I acted out of, out of ignorance and unbelief. So he's reminding Timothy, look, I was called to the ministry just like you're called to the ministry, Timothy. And just like I was messed up and I was ignorant, yet I received mercy. He continues on this line of thinking. He says, And the grace of our Lord overflowed along with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. So he's pointing it back to the one who's strengthening him. So he's saying, look, I was I messed up. I was a blasphemer. I was a persecutor. I was an arrogant man. But when God gave me mercy, even when I was in my ignorance, he granted me grace and it overflowed, it overcame all of my previous mistakes, all of my past sins. The grace of our Lord overflows along with the grace of the Lord's faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. So that that overcomes my past sins, that overcomes my past mistakes. So he's using this as, a, as an encouragement to Timothy like, Pointing to himself as, I don't deserve it, and yet here I am, serving God, serving the ministry, knowing that I'm under grace. 
He continues, the saying is trustworthy and deserving. So trust what I'm about to say and deserving of full acceptance. Pay attention to what I'm about to say to you. This particular thing that I'm going to say to you right now, Timothy, pay very close attention to it. What does he say? Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. What is this statement here? Why is it worthy of all our trust and deserving of our full acceptance? This is the gospel. It is the gospel of salvation. It is the gospel that saved us. Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners. That was the work of Christ, the finished work of Jesus on the cross. That's what he came to do. You can trust that. You can Put all of your attention to that. And when you're in ministry, when you're called to the mission of the gospel, you can know that this same message that saved you can be worthy of your entire dedication. It can be worthy of your entire trust. He continues. And I, this is Paul, am the worst of them. Worst what? The worst sinner. Paul knew this about himself. I know this about me, and you should know this about yourself. I personally am the worst sinner that I know. You should know that you are the worst sinner that you know, because you know your own mind. You know your own heart. You know your own past. You don't know what's going on in other people's lives, but you know what you are. You know who you are without Jesus. And so knowing that the gospel saved us and that we're called to this ministry of the gospel should make us say, I'm the worst of sinners. I don't deserve any of this. And yet Christ has called me. He says in verse 16, but so in light of what I just said, it doesn't matter because here comes the contrast, but I, this is Paul, this is you, you can insert yourself in this. I received mercy. God had pity and compassion for, for us and on us. He says, but I received mercy for this reason. What is the reason that God gave mercy to Paul? What was that reason? He says, so that in me, the worst of them, the worst what? The worst sinner Christ Jesus might demonstrate his extraordinary patience. That's amazing. That we should be able to recognize within ourselves. We received mercy. Christ gave us mercy. God gave us mercy for the very reason, for the particular reason to show the rest of the world around us and to demonstrate the extraordinary patience, the long-suffering of Christ Jesus. Because Paul goes on to say, here in uh, verse 16, as an example to those who would believe in him for eternal life. Your life as a testimony, your life of the gospel, your life of the grace of God, is precisely why God saved you, so that you could be used as a vessel, as a walking testimony of the grace and the mercy of Jesus Christ. And that's what Paul is saying to Timothy. And so he continues in verse 17. Now to the King eternal, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. That's that. Verse 17 there is so important. That's like Paul saying to Timothy, man, I can't even begin to fathom the goodness of this eternal king. And he just starts to praise him by calling him all of these deep, theologically rich realities, these, these attributes of God. You are the eternal king. You are the immortal. You are the invisible. You are the only God. And to you belong the honor and glory forever and ever because of the gospel that saved us. And because he uses that gift of grace in us to show the rest of the world his extraordinary patience. God is a good king. And so he says to Timothy, to wrap up chapter 1, he says, Timothy, my son, 
and it's not his biological son, but rather a spiritual one. Paul writes to him like a spiritual son, just full of love, full of caring, full of compassion. He says, my son, I am giving you this instruction. What instruction? Well, all of 1 Timothy, but I would say as well as 2 Timothy, any letter that Paul writes to him as theologically and also practically rich points of practice, rebuke, correction, whatever it is, encouragement, everything that he writes in these two books to Timothy are instruction. And what are these instructions meant to do? He says, in keeping with the prophecies previously made about you, so that by recalling them, recalling what? The prophecies. By recalling them, you may fight the good fight. Now, I'm going to fast forward a little bit because in 1 Timothy chapter 4, in uh, verses 13 through 15, Paul mentions these prophetic utterances about Timothy. Again, he says, 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 13, Until I come, give your attention to public reading, exhortation, and teaching. Don't neglect the gift that is in you. It was given to you through pro prophecy, with the laying on of hands, by the counsel of the elders. Practice these things, be committed to them, so that your progress may be evident to all. So it sounds like what Paul is mentioning here in these prophecies previously made about Timothy, and when he says, recall them, remember them, put them to your memory, so that you can fight the good fight, what it seems like is that Paul along with other elders, came to Timothy, they laid hands on him, they called him to the ministry, they encouraged him and exhorted him to ensure that he's reading and teaching the scriptures rightly. And so by the laying on of hands and the prophetic utterance of these elders over Timothy, Paul's reminding him, remember, we prayed over you. We had a prophetic word over you. We want you to teach the word well. We want you to be reading the word. We want you to be exhorting the people in the church. And by doing so, by recalling that prophecy, you may fight the good fight. What is this good fight? The good fight of sound doctrine of the gospel ministry. He wants Timothy to make sure that he's staying focused on the call of the ministry, the preaching of the gospel, good teaching, sound doctrine, but also being a good pastor to the church in Ephesus. He says in verse 19, having faith and a good conscience, which some have rejected and have shipwrecked the faith. So he's pointing him. How do you fight this good fight? Through faith and a good conscience. So you want to believe God. You want to trust God. You want to trust his word. You want to trust this prophetic gifting. But also you want to do it with a good conscience. You just don't want to have faith, but then fail in every aspect of your ministry. It's far too common that pastors would claim to have faith, but fail in the gospel ministry. He says, I want you to have a good conscience while also being faithful to the calling that you receive. And then reminds him in the same passage in verse 19, he says, which some, which some have rejected and shipwrecked the faith. That is the faith of the gospel, the faith of Jesus Christ. They have rejected it and they have shipwrecked it. So why does Paul want him to remember the prophecy? So that he doesn't fall into this same um, the same sins that these other people fell into, the ones that rejected and the, and the other ones that shipwrecked their faith. And there's multiple, but Paul points out particularly 
two people in these passages. He says in verse 20, among them are Hymenaeus and Alexander. So he points, Paul points to Hymenaeus and Alexander as examples of those who rejected and shipwrecked the faith of the Lord Jesus Christ. Why? Because they didn't give attention to the words of Paul. They didn't remember the prophecies. They didn't fight the good fight. They didn't continue in faith. They didn't do the ministry in good conscience. And so because of that, they fell into temptation. They probably fell into false talk, doctrine or teaching, or maybe it was a moral failure. It's not very clear precisely what it is that they were guilty of, but whatever it is, they failed and they left the faith. They shipwrecked their own faith. And so he says, these individuals, Hymenaeus and Alexander, he says, whom I have delivered to Satan so that they may be taught not to blaspheme. Paul is so zealous for Timothy. He's so protective over Timothy's walk and Timothy's call that he says, look it, I want you to do well. I don't want you to end up like these two others, Hymenaeus and Alexander and the other ones who have rejected and shipwrecked the faith. I don't want you ending up like that. He says, those other people, those other two, I have delivered them to Satan. And that is in clear cooperation of the scripture in Matthew 18 and also in 1 Corinthians where there is a standard by which we eventually come to a place where an unrepentant believer is excommunicated from the church. And Paul says it very clearly in 1 Corinthians that we are to hand those people over to Satan for the destruction of their flesh so that their souls might be saved. And so Paul is just continuing that same practice here. Just reminding Timothy, this is what happens when unrepentant individuals turn from the truth and turn to a shipwrecked faith. So Christian listening, pastor listening, ministry leader listening, it is vitally important that you hold on to the faith that you hold on to sound doctrine, that you remember the calling that you received in the Lord Jesus Christ. You remember you're under the mercy and the grace of Jesus. You're being strengthened by Jesus. You're no longer that old person. You're now made new in Jesus. So fight the good fight. Strive to be faithful. Strive in the gospel with a good conscience so that you will not find yourself rejecting the faith and shipwrecking the faith. Thank you so much for listening. Until next time on Walking Through the Word.